This episode of For the Record is brought to you by the Camp Entertainment. Broski. What's up, man? What's the word, man? Too much, man. I can't complain. So look, man, this is for the record. We really want to get to know you, you know what I mean? So for those who don't know, tell us who is Blue Benjamin Sleepy. So I'm a uh, I'm an artist from the west side of Baltimore. I'm Lion Valley and Appleton. Uh, a pioneer from the city. Been doing it for a minute. Okay. For about six, seven years now. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And What's the Blue Benjamin Collective? What's all that? So Blue Benjamin, basically the brand. That's the uh you know, it's collective, you know what I mean? Everything is a hundred. You feel me? We, you know, we chase the paper all day long. That's what it's about. You feel me? And that's just what it came from. That's what it started off from. But now it just grew to be a bigger brand. You yeah, know what I'm saying? For sure. So you said you're a pioneer, which you are. You know, you you really are influential in the Baltimore music scene, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and it's crazy we hear at Soundgarden because you mentioned when you was younger, you know what I mean? You used bro, to come here? Middle school, bro. I used to skip school and come down here somewhere in Fells Point. Bro, I used to come down here, smoke my little weed and shit, but I used to come in here. And they never used to tell me I couldn't come in here. But I used to come in here just look at different records and little, get, little gadgets and shit that they had sitting around for real. I couldn't buy nothing because I was broke as shit, but yeah. So you, you saying music really meant a lot to you since a young yeah, age, right? Yeah, when I used to see this shit, I used to be like, damn, they got a whole music store, you feel what I'm saying? One day I'm gonna have my shit in this motherfucker. Okay. But you know, everything digital now, so right. you know what I mean? As far as like records and shit like this, but. Yeah. Okay, so what was you listening to when you was growing up, when you were skipping school in middle school to come down here? So I was listening to a bunch of different music, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Like, as a kid, bro, I was listening to a bunch of different music. You might hear me listening to fucking Chris Brown, then you might hear me listening to Hot Boys, you know what I'm saying? Then you might, I might be in the house playing rock band, and I'm playing rock music, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, you came in the game, you was, you know, like, the up-and-comer, but now you are, like, the established veteran. How does that, how does that feel to you? It still get bigger. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I look at it. You know, it's still far to go, so. Okay. I don't really, we still going, we still pushing. Okay. You feel me? So that's how I For sure, so do me a favor, man. Set the record straight. On the run, what was going on when you created that track? I was really on the run. Now I ain't got no choice to rap. I did some shit I can't take back. Shit can't trick it a lot, try to stick me and they try and leave a nigga flat. Fuck the judge, I the prosecutor. If I catch a charge, I ain't going back. I'm on the run, ride with my strap. I don't care how long I got on my back, but I'm on the run. Yeah. I was really on the run for a minute. Like I was on the run for like six, seven months before I even made that song. You get what I'm saying? That was probably like the eighth month when I made it. You <laughs> feel me? I just went in the studio, bitch, I'm on a run. You get what I'm saying? Really was just making music about what, it, what I'm going through. And I still to this day, I just make music about what I'm going through. At that time, I was a young, retarded nigga that was on the run from the, you feel me, from the law. And that's, that's how I came. So, you know what I mean? What is it like to see the music that you make, the honest music that you make, it's still getting played to this day. You see it's on TikTok and whatnot. Just don't be the nigga fell inside the coffin. Nah. Uh. I beat a nigga, hey, your mommy walk, and I beat a nigga with the back of the pole. Beat a nigga till I break up his nose. Beat a nigga, put his face on the floor. Uh, I'm the one with the pole. You know, what's, what's that reception like for you? So it's crazy because on the run going so viral, five, six years later, it was crazy, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, it already went viral from the time that we dropped it. You know, it been hit, it been surpassed a million and some change views and things like that for real, but bro, Five, six years later, it goes viral, it goes viral again on TikTok. See, what I what I do know is if TikTok would have been out, on the run probably would have been platinum. Right. You get what I'm saying? Right. About TikTok just being a new thing or whatever, and you know, all all great music resurfaced. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's timeless for real. That's how I look at it. For music sure. timeless, that's how. So, you know, you're an entrepreneur, right? How how does the, the trial-lease partnership, how does that come about? Um. So that's just a brand, that's another brand, you know what I'm saying, under the umbrella. Now, I wouldn't say it's under the umbrella of Blue Benjamin, but you know, it's just something that, you know, it's, it's a part of the family, it's a branded thing of the family, so. Mm -hmm. Trolleys, you know, Yeah. if you know, you know. For sure, for sure. <laughs> every time, you know, every time we see you, you got it with you, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you consider yourself, you know, like a stoner rapper to the same essence of like a Wiz Khalifa yeah, or a Snoop yeah. Dogg? So, so that's one thing that I, that's one direction I always push towards, you get what I'm saying? Like one day I will be on the same screens and the same platforms as the Wes Khalifas and the, the Snoop Dugs and the Burners and 
and the people that's big in the cannabis industry. You get what I'm saying? Going going all the way legal and things like that for real. So that's definitely, yeah. For sure, for sure. So, you know, we got to know you a little bit. Now we're gonna talk a little bit more about music and movies and things of that nature. You ready for that? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's go. Bro, so we here talking music, you know, everything that helped you growing up and whatnot, right? right, right. right. We got this classic, Kanye West yeah. College Dropout. Kanye his Dropout. first debut album. What, what was going on with you when you heard this album? Bro, I was in like early middle school, nigga. I was in like the sixth grade, some shit like that. And uh, I just remember riding around with my father listening to this shit. You feel what I'm saying? So it was like a big part of my childhood. You know how you ride around with your peoples and they, you only listening to certain music, you were listening to what they listening to for real, for real. Right. So. Yeah, I just remember that though, bro. Like, okay. Definitely was a good, a good stage yeah. of life. You was talking, you know, middle school, elementary school type days. We got an Earl Smith album. I used to play motherfucking rock band, guitar hero. You know, the Errol Smith album's on there. Mm -hmm. And that was one of them crazy ones right there. Okay. That and was one of them crazy ones. Right did, did like rock band, guitar hero, things like that, did that like feed into your creativity? Fuck yeah, okay. fuck yeah. It's crazy though because like, just me saying it is what brought back the memory. You feel what I'm saying? I probably would have never even ran and grabbed it, but when I seen it, it just brought back memory. So I had to grab that Errol Smith album. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, another, another big, you know, big statement right here is the Boondocks. You know, what's Boondocks. going on with the Boondocks? Who didn't watch the Boondocks? Bro? Yeah. Everybody watched the Boondocks growing up. Well, if you're from where we from, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Everybody watched the Boondocks, bro. And yeah, I seen this shit too. I had to pick this up. Okay. It's one of the ones. If I could, if I found a series, if I found actual CDs, I'd have grabbed that. So, you know, like, we know you outside of just this. We know you're a funny person. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, you're yeah. naturally correct, charismatic. Did the Boondocks ever, like, help, you know, develop your, your sense of humor, things like that? I think by me having that sense of humor is the reason I watch You know, everybody can't watch the bone dots. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So by me having that type of sense of humor, yeah, that soft humor. Cool. That, 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 yeah. Young Jeezy. Jeezy. Debut Trump. album. Come on, man. Everybody listening to, well, like I say, if you're from where we from, everybody listening to Jeezy. We grew up on Jeezy. It's another, it's another album, but I was in, I was more so like, this is when I was outside though. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. This is when I was outside moving around. On my own, you get what I'm saying? I was bumping my Jeezy. I was bumping, I was bumping, uh, I was bumping Gucci and shit like that too, but I couldn't find an oh, album. Okay. Yeah. And then for last, ASAP Rocky's ASAP debut Rocky. album. ASAP so this was my high school days right here. Mm -hmm. I was taking my little trips, mm -hmm. and this is what I was fucking with right here. Yeah. Yeah, I was fucking with that ASAP Rocky, man. Long live ASAP. For sure, for sure. He, he had like a big influence on not just, you know, music, but, you know, people's fashion sense. Fashion, yeah, you yeah, yeah, me? hell yeah. The sound. Yeah. All that. All right, so, you know, we, we got to know what, what helped you develop and whatnot. Now we're going to really talk about what you got going on next. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's get it. Bro, so look, man, we really, really get to talk about, you know, what you what you got coming up now, you know what I mean? Yeah. I know you just dropped, you know, Dirty Roses. Sometimes you lose the ones you love, it's crazy how this shit go. So many tears start to flood them, they my heart and my nose. You say you love me, but you hate me. How the fuck that shit go? You say you love me, but you hate me, and that shit's on the show. Tell us, tell us, like, the thought process behind that creative. Um, shit, that was just for the people, for real. I know a lot of, my, a lot of people in the city going through a bunch of shit. You know what I'm saying? You know how the city is right now. It's crazy. So, Dirty Roses. Yeah. It's, you know what I'm saying? It's very heartfelt. You yeah, know what it's I mean? very heartfelt. Yeah, yeah. Even down to, you know, you did the uh, the video, like the piano video. Yeah, so I did like a live performance version of it, like an unplugged version of it for real. I really, yeah, I really appreciate it. that go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. You also just dropped a video for Bo at the Bow. Yeah, Bo at the Bow, I got scrapes on my elbows. Find that help lose the pounds, but I sell those. Find the blood, keep that shit on the elbow. I'm the blood, better keep that shit mellow. Who you locked great, in with that? The great Clay Stacks, man. He's behind the camera. Okay. You know, hey, check your out. Oh, man, listen. Yo, right here. The great Clay Stacks. If you don't got a Clay Stacks video, then I don't know what you're doing. Okay. But, you know what I mean? Uh, how'd y'all yeah. come, you know, locked in together? Uh, so, you know, man, Clay, we've been locked in, man. We just haven't really got too much 
work together. You get what I'm saying? So it's just about that time. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's that time. Okay. Well, you know, we got to know you. We yeah. got to know Clay already. Hell yeah. Man, let's end it, man. All right. Brody, we got to know you already. Yes, sir. Now it's time for our game, okay? Okay. You start on a deserted island, and you can okay. only bring five things in the store with you. Okay. But you only got a minute to do it. 60 seconds. 60 seconds. All right, can back. you handle that? I can do it. Let's do it. Let's get it. I'm going to grab this. Yeah. The Warriors. Got to grab that. Yeah. Fuck it. Young Thug, business is business. The new shit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Bitch. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Dang. Fuck it. Grab right there. Yeah. All right, bro. <laughs> Look like you out of breath and stuff, man. You was rushing, huh? Yeah. Hey, 15 seconds left. I feel it. So so tell me what you what you grabbed, bro. All right, so I grabbed. You feel me? The four way edition. It's all about the Benjamins. Fridays, all the Fridays. Classic. Uh, I got the Young Thug, Benis is Benis. I fuck with the. Got the Warriors, bro. In case I get bored, I can play my game. You feel me? Smart. I can smoke, you know what I mean? Yeah, be. Then I got my bag just so I can hold all my shit. For sure. Yeah, I need a tote bag. Well, bro, we appreciate you coming uh, for the record. It's a wrap. All right.